Okay, in the last lecture, we sent some test fake IoT payloads up to a super basic website just to show how WebSockets works and to say we can send our messages from AWS over to our browser. And that browser can be hosted almost anywhere if you put that browser with that WebSocket endpoint on GitHub or DigitalOcean, it'll work exactly the same. But what I've done now is I've updated the code to do a full visualization and then we're going to tie in AWS IoT core and then use that test script to go ahead and send it emulated data that would come out of your IoT device. And again, if you've taken my course, you already have scripts to run this on the ESP8266 and ESP32 and the Raspberry Pi using the AWS IoT SDKs and Python and JavaScript. But for this, you can just use test data into AWS IoT Core. It makes everything easier. So let's look at the code I have on the website. So the first code is the index HTML. That's not very exciting. It just calls the main JS, which is going to have our charting code. But it does call jQuery and high charts in this code and just gives us a basic splash screen. But let's look where the excitement takes place. So main.js is going to do all the work. Now, if you went over, and I hope you did, you saw my synchronous lecture on my client poll to get synchronous data out of S3. You've seen pretty much this exact same code. The only difference is this part. I'm bringing in that IoT payload via this WebSocket endpoint that we just made. And then, of course, I have to use this JSON dumps here to turn what appears when we do a console log as a JSON payload into a real JSON payload. Because console log is actually a very durable function. So it looks like a JSON payload, but until we actually use JSON parse in JavaScript, it doesn't actually turn into a real payload. So we need to use that JSON parse or in Python as JSON dumps. And that can be pretty confusing for most people. And I use JSON dumps, obviously, in that Python code, because it's the same issue. That IoT payload comes in, and I can print it out in Python, but it's coming in as a dictionary, and you can't convert the dictionary in Python to real JSON without using JSON dumps. But here it's called JSON parse. I think that's the only confusing part. Otherwise, the code looks exactly the same for high charts that we've already gone over. I've already uploaded that to our S3 bucket, so let's go ahead and get that connection ID, tie it into our send message function, and from there we can tie in AWS IoT Core and start sending real payloads. So again, just like the last lecture, I'm going to open the URL to our index HTML. So open this over here. To get that, I'm going to say, hey, Control Shift I. Again, if you're in Chrome, it's Control Shift J. And I put in this custom message. So I said WebSockets is connected. Now you can check your connection ID. So great, let's go to CloudWatch and get our new connection ID and put it into that Lambda function. So I'm gonna go here to AWS Lambda Connections. That's that Lambda function we just made. Refresh it. Make sure I get the newest one that I just created when it sent that HTTP blob back to AWS. Again, we got the big blob here and there's our brand new connection ID. So go ahead and copy yours and don't do like me and get this whole unnecessary data. Copy that, go over here to send IoT payload, and I'm gonna put it here as our new connection ID. Again, I'm gonna fix this problem by making this automated in the next series of lectures. And that's gonna be a little bit more advanced IoT for WebSockets. This is good to go. Go ahead and deploy this. Now go back here to the dashboard. Now what should happen when we start sending payloads is we should start getting our graph going. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we can test that that works, and you should test that works too. So I made a second test event. So if you look over here at Configure Test Events, I made what our real payload should look for. So I'm just going to go ahead and send this test event, and then hopefully if everything works out, we got our first point. I'm going to change this payload once over here by reconfiguring this, and let's just say 75. 99 and let's change this time so we can change our x axis which is timestamps to 322 save that and test that and immediately unlike synchronous where we're polling this will appear over here okay so that's half the work done now let's do the other half let's tie this into aws iot core so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and go over here to iot core 
Okay, great. Finally, I'm over here at AWS AOT Core. Make sure you're in the same region. Go to Actions Rules, and I'm going to create a new rule. Create, I'm going to call it IoT Push. And it's an asynchronous push, and I'll just put it over here so it matches everything else. And I'm going to use a special SQL statement. And the reason is I'm going to cheat a little bit. There's macros, and I'll put a list to where the documentation is like timestamp, and then you're going to see how I'm going to use topic in my rules query statement to automatically add a field to my JSON payload. Here's why this is helpful. From basic Arduino devices, you need extra hardware, or extra libraries to get a real Unix timestamp from the device. I don't want to do that. Now, obviously, I can do that anytime easily in multiple formats in Python or Node.js and simply add a date now timestamp as this IoT payload passes through and add that onto my JSON package. That's great, but why don't I go ahead in this specific example, take advantage of sending it a rules query statement that'll automatically do that for me. Here's where I put it. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'm going to explain it to you. Copy that, go back here and edit this. So I'm going to paste that in here. And instead of just grabbing everything from that IoT topic, it's going to say select everything, but also add a timestamp onto my JSON package. And I can call it whatever I want. I want to call it something that matches my code on my static web host bucket, which is timestamps. If I go back to the code over here, you'll see in this main JS, I call it timestamps here. So I got to match that literally by name. Now for the topic, doesn't really matter what you call it here, but it's going to matter in the upcoming lecture. So I'm just going to go call it something fungible that I can use for the next series of lectures where I use MQTT messaging as a more sophisticated Lambda. And you're going to see why this is important. But for now, I'm going to call it IoT slash pound slash hash. And that means any extension after that backslash, or is that a forward slash? Any extension will work. So I can use multiple topics as long as they start with IoT slash. Great. Now I'm going to go ahead and add an action on. And you probably already know what that's going to be. Send this message from AWS IoT Core to Lambda. Boom. Configure the action. It's going to access which Lambda. Guess which Lambda we're going to send it to. That's right, send IoT payload. I found it, so go ahead and select that Lambda. So this Lambda actually has two events coming in, right? It has that connection ID event coming from our connection Lambda, and under the, also the event parameter in the function, I can send events from IoT core. So that's pretty cool. We're going to need to make more sophisticated to differentiate that in the next series of lectures, but for now, this is fine. So go ahead and add that action. And... Go ahead and create a rule, and it should automatically be enabled here. Make sure you don't have anything else enabled that you want to send, and there it is. It always adds to the bottom, and I'll just make sure that rule is enabled. Boom. All right, it's enabled. IoT push 1227, and this should show me. So you see how I have the API gateway, which sends that endpoint data from our browser to this function, as well as from that other Lambda function. When I refresh this page, you'll see IoT is now automatically added as a trigger. Because when we created that rule, IoT core went to the policy role and added this into this permission. So this is now a trigger. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And now you see AWS IoT here is a trigger, and I never closed this off. Let's go back to IoT Core, and now we can start sending real data to our test site. So let's go into the test client, publish data, and now I can send it any topic that starts with IoT slash, it doesn't matter what I put. So for this, I'm going to put just a nonsense string, as long as it's IoT slash, it'll get to our dashboard. The one thing I do have to make sure of is that we're still connected. So, yep, it looks like we're still connected here. So we can start sending data. So let's go over back to IoT Core, and I'll quickly type in the parameters that we want and fast forward so you don't have to wait. All right, I almost started adding timestamps, but again, we don't need to add timestamps. It's going to automatically be added for us. Okay, so the other thing I messed up on is this is in a JSON payload because you can't have a comma trailing here. So let's send this again, publish that. I'll change the value here. 
publish that. And let's publish one more. And again, that timestamp will automatically be added in if everything's worked out okay. Okay, it got real hot, 114 degrees. All right, let's go back over here. There we go. We got all our data here that was just done. So the very last thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to use that automated AWS CLI test script I used in the synchronous client poll lectures earlier. So that automates our IoT payloads for us. So let me go ahead and set that up and then start sending data over there you can see in real time. Okay, so here's my test script. Again, I've used this in previous lectures. I just called it here IoT Tester. And it's the bash script, so it should work on us any operating system. Here I'm calling the MQTT topic, IoT GGG. As long as, again, if it's IoT slash, because I use that hash, it doesn't matter what this extension is. I'm going to run it 10 times and just wait two seconds between each time. So it automatically connects with my CLI. Hopefully you already understood that from the previous lecture. So I already navigated over to that directory. So I'm just going to come over here and say IOT underscore tester dot SH. That's all it takes to run. It'll start running here. I can close this off. It's sending data. Just so you know it's sending data, I'll subscribe to IOT slash hash. That'll show me the incoming data payloads coming in. All right, there it goes. It's updating in real time. Don't need this open. So there's our bash script running. It's hitting IoT core and updating in real time. If we go back here to IoT core, you should see those payloads coming in. It's not showing the timestamp because what's coming in isn't the timestamp, but the timestamp is actually being added here on the dashboard, as you can see down here. And we can run this again if we want to get more data. So if we run it again, it'll start sending more data. And as long as that connection ID is still valid, you'll see asynchronously that this is still getting updated. There's like a second delay, but that's only because it's coming from the script to IoT core to Lambda to API gateway to the browser. So it takes like half a second or something to be reflected. So here it is. I'll provide all the links and resources for this project, but let's talk real briefly on how we can improve this project. Well, first, obviously, I don't want to keep entering that connection ID. Can we automate that process? Well, we can do it with SNS, but we can also do it with MQTT messaging. For our situation, MQTT messaging internally between Lambdas is going to be more useful. So I'm going to show you how to do that to have a more sophisticated asynchronous WebSocket connection and use this same visualization for something a little bit more advanced. So hold on for those lectures. And then we'll have even more advanced stuff coming in this series. I'll see you there.